Hey there everyone, and welcome back to the second episode of our Command Ops 2 Let's Play. So, last time around, you guys listened to me whine on for like ages, um, explaining all the concepts. But we did start getting into some action, which is good. Uh, this time around, we're going to get our bridges built, get our armoured forces moving, and keep pushing west. Which is good, good, good. Um, my biggest actually probably biggest problem I actually come against come up against is actually not pushing too hard, uh, not pushing hard enough I should say. Um, actually not you know making sure that actually sort of really push my troops sometimes and um, even if you know things are a little bit tough actually sort of you know really push and actually keep moving. And a lot of time you actually sort of find you actually run out of time. Well, I find I run out of time. You actually sort of you have to sort of really be um, on the ball to actually sort of keep things going. Anyway, today we are going to keep going. So we've got so this um, little this battalion here. A little bit worried about these guys. Getting a little bit exposed. There's a bunch of enemy units in here. I can see already. There's probably going to be some more on the way. A little bit worried. These guys are going to be a little bit um, exposed on the hill. There's no real protection for them. So what I'm actually half tempted to do actually get them to attack down into earth spells down into the objective straight away the problem that leaves is it's going to leave a big massive gaping line uh, or gap in my lines over here and that that gap leads right down into the new bridge into the bridge that we're building i don't think we're gonna they don't think they're gonna push far enough down to cause the problems here because i think the bridge should be actually built in the next few hours maybe um I mean, worst case scenario, we could probably even probably set up. I mean, do we have? So there's a couple of tools here I haven't shown you guys yet. It's a line of sight tools. So you actually see um, line of sight. So yeah, so I'm not actually so if, even like worst case scenario. You actually see here. So for example, at this point where we've clicked this green point, there's actually what unit a unit sitting at that point can actually see. So if we set up some units up here on the on the ridge up here, which we can see, they can actually see all the way up that road um, and any units coming down here to cause us problems. Um, we can actually set up some units to actually make sure that they actually sort of get fired on and make sure they actually don't reach the bridge. I don't think they're gonna come down this track, it's highly unlikely they're not gonna come down this road because we've got it covered. It's down here down this road um, that we can see. I haven't explained this either, so you actually see this solid line is a road, um, the, this line here, the, the dotted line is a track, and there's a whole bunch of different different types of ones as well, so this one here is a minor road, um, and then I think this one is a minor road as well, minor road, minor road, whereas this one is an actual road, yeah, and then obviously the red one is a highway, so there's a highway, um, so obviously the bigger the road, or the bigger the you know, the type of thing, the faster units move across it. Anyway, so I think that's what we'll do. So we've already got, already got um, KG Goodman sitting here. So what I think I'm actually do, they've got a bunch of tanks and um, mechanized units here. Although they're, they're, you see their range, it's another sort of important consideration. They actually don't have the range to sit out there. So do we have any tank units that we can sit, like a tank battalion? What's that one there? You've got, um, what's your range like? Looks like it should be big enough. All right, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna send the second battalion, third Panzer Regiment, just to sit on this ridge down here to make sure that no units coming down here can actually reach our bridge. So we're gonna set up a defend order. So just using the um, hotkeys, you're gonna click on the defend order there. Let's click this one here. Actually, we might as well just use a move order. There's no real need to put a defend order there. So we're gonna just set up defend order. We're gonna orient it towards, make sure they're facing towards the road uh, about there. Um, and we make sure the footprint covers just this ridge area so they're sitting where we are. So that should be about perfect there. Um, and yeah, everything else should be fine. We should put aggro on max to make sure they actually engage units that they come across. And I think, yeah, so they've got cover to cover that distance there. So we cover that out to the area. So they should they should be able to cover this area. All right, so there we go. Bit of a thing there, we're gonna get rid of that. Um, I should have mentioned last time around as well, if this sort of interface looks a bit weird, it's because all these the units actually there's no sort of set interface all these screens can actually moved around um, all these ones can be moved around so they're actually toggled on and off by this one down here so the only sort of constant one is this bottom bar down here everything else uh, where are we messages uh, and these two and orders there we go so that's actually sort of what the screen looks like without any ones so it's sort of designed it's actually new in the new command ops um, 2 engine is that these sort of these movable screens. It's actually designed to play on two screens. So normally you'd have like this map screen on one and have all like your command toolbars and stuff on a different screen, but it's a little bit difficult to record on um, on multiple screens. So this sort of action stuff would be too small for you guys. So we're just going to set up this one like we've got at the moment. Should be fine. Fine, fine, fine. Not fire support messages. And then these two. There we go. Cool. 
So it's a little bit cluttered, it may look a little bit weird, but that's what we've got. Cool, so um, everything's going well. Uh, we've got the reinforcements and stuff moving in, which is awesome. Bridge is being built, we've got our artillery set up, um, and we've secured this objective here. I'm actually going to push out earlier than I did uh, in my last playthrough, see if we can actually secure some more ground before reinforcements come. Because as it said in the in the mission briefing, um, initial resistance is going to be light, but then probably get some reinforcements coming from the, the west over here, I suspect, later on. Um, and then we'll see how that goes. So I think I'm going to leave this mission, just this battalion, a little bit longer, see if we can see how they go. If they're taking too much fire, like artillery and fire, I'm get them to attack straight down to the village quickly. What I think I'm going to do, I'm going to send this battalion here. So I think we've got this battalion here, so the 1st Battalion, 78th Regiment, it's going to come up here. What I think I'm going to do, I think I'm actually going to send the 1st Battalion, 77th Regiment, actually send them actually down towards the um, the objective down here, the bridge down here. Um, see how far we can actually get, see if we can actually clear out some some territory down here. Because it looks like all the, the enemy units are actually coming up from this direction, not really from this way. So I think that's what we'll do there. And then what we're also going to do is send, is to send both these battalions down here, down along the ridge, down into this town of Constum, of the objective, and actually secure that ASAP. So we're going to do that now. So what we're going to do, we're going to send an attack. Um, I think I'm going to do an attack order straight away from both, just from where they are. It's a fair distance to cover, but given that there's, there's units in the area already, I don't really want to form up too much. So we're just going to place an attack order. So that means they're going, to de they're going to define their own um, format point, or the, the, the HQ will define its own format point. I suspect it's just going to be where they are, um, but we'll see how that goes. So we're going to put one just really to the here, just so we cover some of this forest and clear out some, some units along the road. And what I'm going to do with this one, I'm just going to put them on to minimum rest. Um, everything else, should we do an echelon formation? Uh, so for attacking down there, we want we would want a left echelon, so it means the right, so it'd slope down that way, wouldn't it? Yeah. So no, we'd want a right echelon to make because there's probably more, more units in this area. So it's highly likely unlikely to be units in this area. So the right echelon formation means that the formation is going to slope um, from left to right or right. So the right is the bottom. Just slope up like that across this way. So I think that's the right way it works, which means they're going to get more firepower out to the right. So I think that probably makes more sense. We're actually going to do that. And right echelon formation for that one there. Um, everything else can be just stock standard. For this brigade here, we're going to set up an attack move. I think what we might do. I think this brigade up here should be able to handle any units in this little town here. I think what we're actually going to do is actually set them, this, this battalion to move down here, keep them in the forest, make sure they're facing out towards this way, there we go, keep them in the forest, then what we're going to do is actually then attack from the forest out towards the objective, like that, just leave like that, and I think we're going to leave the formation to be defined and everything else to be defined. So there we go, so that's what we're going to do. So we're going to get one to attack sort of down the tree line and one to actually going to attack from the trees straight across to the objective. So that should be good. We're going to set up a move order. So what we're going to do here, so we could do a probe. So there's a probe. So basically a probe is like a light attack, um, sort of like a reconnaissance in force. So, but I think we're uh, probably actually, uh, but it's a long way to go. We don't really know what we're going to come up against. We're actually just going to do a move order. So we're actually, what we're going to do so which way are we going to come? So once we build this bridge, so the main road comes up here, attaches here, and then comes down to these bridges. So there's not really any road that hooks up from here. It comes from here, doesn't it? These are all tracks. I mean, we could come down the tracks. It's not a real problem. It's going to be a little bit slower for our armored forces, though, to actually get to this road. I mean, if they can get, get they can get down here and then come up along this along this road and then come across, but really it's probably just easier for them to come across. Um, I'm just thinking about which way to actually move down for this battalion. I think we might actually move down here, move down to this village down here. Then we'll see, because we're still on the ridge there, and then we can see we may even push down across the river, or even set up on that, in that forest there maybe. We'll see how we go. Alrighty, so, um, 
think we'll do a probe. We'll probe. So sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? Um, we'll set up a probe there. So we'll probe down into the village just to look, see how things are going. Because we actually don't know what we're going to come up against. There could be a whole stack of units here. It's unlikely because we haven't seen any there, but just for some fun, some difference, uh, we'll set up a probe and see how that goes. Everything else is fine. We'll get the game running. Our reinforcements and stuff are moving forward, which is good. Here, artillery. Where's artillery? Ah, oh, there. That's fine. So what we're going to do, in preparation for this attack, I'm going to hit this unit here. With a bunch of artillery, try and clear them out of the, out of the village. But I don't think these guys are going to have a problem. It's two battalions up against probably what I think is maybe the remnants of one battalion. So I don't think they're going to have a problem, but it's always a good thing to do. I like to do to, to set up um, artillery in preparation for an attack. Yeah, these guys are taking artillery if I'm a little bit worried about these guys taking too much damage because they're out in the open. What we're going to do is try and suppress some of these units that we can see. So we'll set up some artillery here. Uh, we can't see any here. We might set up just one there just for the because we know there's some units here somewhere. We'll set up another one there. Fortunately we can't see these units here. We think they're probably still there. I think these guys are going to be too I think these guys are too exposed, unfortunately. I think they're just going to, if, we, if they stay, they're just going to keep getting hit over and over again. And these guys are going to start moving down there, which is good to give some protection to that row. There's some units there. So just keep hitting them. In this early stage, I like to hit um, units as much as possible. Right, so these guys run into some problems here. Pause the game. So I'm going to start hitting these guys again to try and clear them out because they're probably dug in. Probably a bit of an artillery overkill, I'm not sure about experienced players, they think I'm doing a bit too far with the artillery, but I think it's better to get. So these guys are entrenched, so we, really, we actually want to sort of clear them out with artillery, if we can, to get them to move, so they get move them out of their entrenched positions. So we're going to take quite a bit of fire to do that, but I think it's going to be worth it if we can get there. So they're even starting to move out, which is good. So at the very least, these guys are going to be suppressed, which means our guys are going to be getting closer to actually attack them. So that, that seemed to work fairly well. It let our guys to get in a bit closer. Oh, mouse flickering is a pain. Take off avoid friendlies. Yeah, avoid friendlies and keep them again. There we go. So I think this round of artillery is probably going to be enough to clear them out. Oh, it's already been enough, actually. They cancel all of these bombard missions because otherwise we'll just lose them. Um, it's a waste of ammo. There we go. So I just clicked on them and deleted. So these guys have moved. So given they're out in the open, they're out there in transpositions. We've got units all around them. That should be fine. They can probably gonna keep retreating. Oh, is there still one happening? Uh, uh, where's Bond? That's not nothing we control. Someone else has done it. That's fine. Fine, fine, fine. Cool, so that's all going well. Um, this battalion's starting to move out. The um, first battalion, 78th Regiment, is starting to move out, which is good. So I'll be up in position up here soon, which is fine. Um, I was going to almost stick, there could be some units here, but I think they should be able to deal with that. Um, what about these guys here? They're still here. So I haven't taken really a whole lot of casualties. I've only taken a couple of percent. So it says here, our scheduled airstrike has been aborted due to poor visibility. So normally it's, there's an airstrike button up here. Normally we would have had an airstrike, but unfortunately there's bad visibility, so we don't get it. Which is a pain, but that's what happened last time I played through this day as well, so... Sometimes that just happens. Oops. Yeah, these guys are getting hit. Um, reinforcement, another reinforcement. So the 901st Regiment, another big regiment attached to the Panzerlier. So the Panzerlier is going to be quite a big regiment, actually. By the time it actually gets all its guys up and running. Um... Are you motorized? Looks like you are. Yeah, you're all motorized. You see down here with the wheels, the movement. So um, these means they're motorized. So we don't really want them to. I was thinking about putting them up here, but it means they'd have to cross the river, which means they'd have to come all up here. So what am I actually going to do? I'm just going to sit them up here. Just so I, don't, I don't want to get stuff too clogged up here. It's going to be a bit of a nightmare. So I'm just going to sit them up here. I mean, it probably doesn't really matter all that much, but anyway. That's what we're going to do. So there we go. So I'm just going to sit these guys. They can sit up here, and then that'll be fine. So the 902 is moving out, they're not quite there, so I won't reattach them yet. Um, Gutman has been reattached to the second, which is awesome. How's our command load looking? It's still on 21, so we still have a fair bit of room to go, which is good. 
Still taking some hits here. All right, yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do? Set up an attack mission. So we're going to put them to attack. I'm going to actually move these guys over here a bit. Hopefully out of the way. Set up our first point here. So it's going to be our form up point. I'm going to attack straight down into the village. Set up back a little bit. We're not going to get too far into the forest. Because what happens is your guys, the units actually once they attack an objective, they'll actually go a little bit past the objective to actually make you know clear out any. Um, forces on the edge of the box or edge, edge of the objective. So we don't want them to go too far because they get too strung out. Just going to place it back a little bit. So we're going to clear out this objective here. So I'm actually going to put down again fastest because um, they're, they're fairly fatigued. So they've got 52% fatigue. So as the name suggests, the more fatigue, uh, so 63% actually on average, so that's quite a bit of fatigue. The more fatigue they've got, the less effective they are. If they get too much fatigue, they're just going to stop. Um, so this is what these rest buttons are here. I'm actually going to put it on none because I'm a little bit worried that they, if I don't, they won't reach the objective. So it means they don't get any rest. So it's going to wear them out quite a bit, especially being on fastest. The reason I'm doing that though is again, it's across open ground. They're being hit with artillery a fair bit anyway. I don't want them to keep getting hit and it's going to keep delaying the attack and it's going to come into fragmented. I want them to move quickly from here um, across down to the objective, across open ground and see what happens. I'm going to put max aggressiveness, max rate of fire just so they clear out any enemies um, ASAP and they're not stuck in the open. So that's the reason we're doing that. I'm just going to put them on to shortest as well. Make sure they don't take some weird route around the objective. Just make sure they want to go straight down or straight over here, straight across the, along the ridge. So they're going to follow the ridge, stay on the ridge here, and they're going to come down into the objective. That's what they want. That's what I want them to do. I don't want them to deviate it there from there at all. So some units up here as we thought. Um, I'm not too worried about these though. I think the the um, first battalion here should be able to handle these. Might hit them with a little bit of artillery, just to um, make sure there's no sort of problems. These guys a little bit of support. They should be fine though. Looks like it's an engineer company and an infantry platoon. So you see there's a platoon. So it's only 46 men, whereas a company our companies have around you know 140 odd men. So. So they're in quite small units, I'm not worried about any of those. So the attack's coming down here, we've got a mortar platoon, I'm not worried about that, I'm not going to bother with artillery, um, should be able to clear that. This is the one that we um, dislodged from the town. I think we should be okay, taking some casualties here and there, but yeah, so these guys are routing, so... Obviously, as, you know, as I suppose logically, once a unit routes once, um, or retreats once, it's more likely that they're going to, um, you know, retreat and route and stuff again because their their morale hasn't had time to recover. So if you sort of keep following a, a retreating unit, they're more likely to route because their morale um, up here, as you can see, morale morale hasn't had time to recover. Basically, to to recover morale, they need to be sort of out of combat to be safe and to sort of be stationary for a while, and the cohesion and the morale will come back up again. So these guys are basically out of the picture. They've routed. They're not really going to be a problem. Um, we should be fine to continue down into the attack. So the attack's going fairly well so far. A little bit slow from this battalion. Um, I'm a little bit tempted to move their speed to faster so they are f quite fatigued because they've been moving through the forest. So that wears them out quicker. So 67% fatigued. These guys are not resting, are they? No, they're still moving, so that's fine. I'll leave it as it is for the moment. I might have to switch it down to no rest to make sure they take it. Because I'm not too worried if these all these infantry battalions get exhausted because they should recover in about around about 12 hours of rest. And once they've secured these objectives, um, once they've cleared out as much of this um, sort of this between these two rivers as much as possible, um, then it's going to come over to the armored platoons to actually armored units to actually sort of move on a little bit further. So you can see here, crossing point is now constructed, so it's recalculating all the movements and stuff. So it's this one here. We can see this objective is now done. So the Uber crossing. Which is awesome, so well ahead of time. So the objective closes on 8.30 a.m. on the second day. It's only um, 3.39 on day one. And then once that finishes, we'll get 15 objective points, which is fine. So the Dasberg crossing shouldn't be far away. So that means we can actually now start moving um, the Panzer Lear Division across, which would be good. We're going to leave the um, engineer units here just to make sure there's a unit in this area. Um, so the objective stays as it is, or stays um, you know, occupied or whatever you want to call it, um, which is fine. So actually I may wait until some of these battalions get up. We don't really need them yet. Um, I mean, saying that, we probably should get them across, shouldn't we? Um, 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 um. KG Von F, that's that one. So I may start moving, because we've got a fair bit of command capacity, don't we? 
So we've got 20, so we've got another 16 command capacity that we can use. <coughs> Excuse me. So I, I think we might start, might start, might start moving battalions, individual battalions across. Because you can see here, um, as I mentioned before, the higher the level that you, the higher the level unit that you give orders to, the longer it's going to take them to actually start moving. So it's going to take this, the Panzer Lee Division almost an hour to get their whole division moving. It's only going to take a sort of a battalion um, 30 minutes. <clears throat> so quite a bit quicker to actually get battalions across. So, so what I think I might do, I may move all the, these battalions across individually and then we'll just, and then we'll move the Panzer Lee Division across um, sort of its support units and then we'll reattach them all and stuff so we don't have command penalties there. Um, so what I think we're going to do, I think we're just going to move straight up this road. So I think we're actually, what we're going to wait a little bit. Um, what we're actually going to do, we're going to move the KG Von F formation, the battalion. We're going to move these guys up here. We're just going to move them up basically on, on top of these ones as well. Just move them just a little bit past like this. And they can follow the road up. And yes, and we'll put a tax onto yes actually. Uh, just leave on normal rest. So what's, it's basically going to give a little bit more support to the, um, the 1st Battalion here. Not that I really think they need it, but that's a good start anyway. Start moving some of these units across. And we'll get some of these other ones up and running as quickly as possible. So these ones are all attached to the Panzer Lear Division directly, aren't they? Yeah, they are. It's got a fair bit of units actually attached to it directly, doesn't it? Uh, divisional Escort, that's what they are. It's like Divisional Escort for the Panzer Lear Division. So make sure the Divisional Headquarters doesn't get overrun. Right, that's fine, so that's not too worried about that. Imagine you hit these guys with a unit of artillery or rounds, a couple of rounds of artillery. Just make sure they get cleared out quickly. Um, this attack's still going well, or these units are being pushed back, our units are still moving forward. This one's a little bit more disjointed, but they're moving out now, which is good. Yep, so these guys so that's dislodged some of these units there, so that's gonna be fine. So this one should start moving out soon. Yeah, these guys are getting hit a little bit too much, so I'm glad I put that attack order in. So I want them to the game to expose there. This little pesky one down here is not moving, is it? Another reinforcements arrived, so light to flak company. Uh, right, so we had the 78th Grenadier Regiment, so that's just a regimental one, so it does have another battalion, infantry battalion, so I'm actually gonna move there. I should move them individually. And move them up to the town actually. So the 78th regiment is going to occupy the town. Um, so it's going to take its battalion along with it. So I'm just going to do that. So it's fine. It's going to start moving out straight away. And the other bridge has been done, which is good. So crossing point now constructed. So this little calculation of terrain tables basically means that because of the um, armored units can now move across, it's sort of recalculating where units can move and all that kind of stuff. The game does lag a little bit once, it, once it's doing that. I should get a message in a minute. There we go. It's done. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Alrighty, so these are all done. So we've now got this objective as well. So we're gonna get a bunch of th we're gonna get 30 points at 8:30 a.m., which would be good. A nice bunch of points there. So already winning this scenario. So you see this little win-loss meter. So it's basically an estimate as things stand of how you're going with the scenario. It's not a sort of a be-all and end-all kind of thing, but it's just sort of a bit of an estimate. So this one's gonna be a little bit more tricky because we don't haven't cleared out this area yet. And I know there's a bunch of units here. Well I can see there's a bunch of units here. So be quite careful because you don't generally don't want to send armored units, tanks um, in there without support into towns and stuff because that gives infantry units um, the opportunity to get close enough to the tanks to actually hit them. Whereas normally you like to see your tanks sort of you know, far enough away that nothing can hit them and they just pound away, which is ideally what you want to do with tanks. I'm looking for maybe a mechanized force, so mechanized infantry, so ones that are on trucks and things or half tracks. Thinking probably Goodman, so it looks like he's only got 89 tanks, but he's got 284 AV. So these ones here are armored um, or basically mechanized. So you can see, you see here the personnel carrier, 16 personnel carriers. Um, yeah, so they're so they're basically they're mechanized infantry units here. There's a bunch of these here. So there's actually a battalion here of three of two combat units. It's not probably not big enough though. It's only 557. So KG Goodman's got a one tank, so one, one tank company, so it's got some Panthers there. Um, and also another one here, a third company there. There we go. So I think we're gonna send KG Goodman forward. What have we got here? Flak Battalion. So that's not a bombard one, is it? That's an anti-armor type one. It's attached directly to that. So this is sort of, um, so we've got Flak 43 guns. 
So these are sort of, um, well it says anti-aircraft, but they, they are used as sort of anti-tank. It's got some machine guns, uh, it's actually a decent sized unit, it's actually got a fairly big unit, 185 men. Some good combat values there, it's also mechanised. What I'm actually going to do, I'm going to take KG Ogutman, and I'm actually going to take what's existing units, and also attach this one. So I'm going to take that one as well, take it away from the second Panzer. Put it on KG Gutman just to check their command capacity. Yeah, it's got, so they've only got capacity of 10s, so only got currently a load of 2, so take on huge more um, force than what's currently got. So that's quite good. Actually, where are you attached to? You're attached to the Holtman, Holtminer force there. Half tend to take you as well, but you're primarily tanks, aren't you? Uh, what about you, the Boma? Boma. You're a battalion, aren't you? Interesting. You're also mechanised infantry, aren't you? Uh, sort of a mix of light tanks there. Uh, bicycles are a reconnaissance one there and sort of like a, a mixed sort of motorcycles and fields so like sort of command radios ones for that one I'm thinking about attaching that battalion to KG Gutman as well because KG Gutman's a, a regiment uh, whereas this is only a battalion it's attached directly to the 2nd Panzer Division that would make KG Gutman quite a big force but Um, Alright, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, and we're going to take this one, and we're going to take the Boma Force. So now they're all selected, we're going to select Move, I'm actually going to just move these guys uh, to here, I think. First, Minimum Rest, Quickest Route. Put on Tax to Yes, facing this way, and less frontage. There we go. Um, then I think what I'm going to do, I think I may have an attack up into here, into the ridge to actually clear the ridge. Clear these couple of towns, clear the ridge, and then I, then I know this area is secured. Still a little bit reluctant though, but uh, to send tanks and stuff, but it is primarily mechanised infantry, isn't it? So, alright, alright, we're going to do that. We're going to take a little bit of a risk. We're going to attack up here to clear out these villages. Attack to probably there. So that should clear out these units here. Hopefully we don't take too many tank casualties. I hate losing tanks. Um, unspecified route. I think we're going to leave everything as normal. I think we go for successive lines though. When you've got mixed, I'm not sure. I know that when you've got infantry and um, armoured units. If you go for successive lines, infantry goes in the first line, armoured in the second, to make sure that you don't like that you don't come against that situation I was talking about about armoured units getting hit. Um, I'm not sure if that still applies with mechanised infantry. I'm suspecting probably yes. Probably makes sense that it would do. They put mechanised infantry in front, then put any tank units in the second right uh, line, so they can provide support fire but actually not get hit first. So we're going to run with successive lines, see how that runs. We'll keep a pretty close eye on this attack though. Alright, there we go. So KG Goodman's now a 2164 force. It's only got 10 and 2. I think that's going to change in a little bit though. Um, it takes time for the command things to adjust. Yeah, so these guys are going to take a bit of time because they're still retreating. So the force is coming in here. So this attack's coming in really quite well. This unit's routed all the way over here, so they're going to be irrelevant now. Awesome. So this is that tax actually going quite well. I was actually a little bit worried. Um, I mean, I'm sort of a little bit. I haven't cheated necessarily. There's a battalion HQ coming here. I'm not worried about those though, at all. It's um, it's an infantry platoon which has only 39 men, and then a HQ unit you know, which is HQ unit so obviously has the you would suggest are pretty weak. Um, so you're attacking down there, aren't you? I may even send you down there as well. I'll send you down to here. Maybe we may even do a two battalion attack onto this objective, see if we can take it earlier. That could be the go. Um, what was I saying? Last time I took I took this town in the first day, um, when I played this game, this scenario through the day last couple of days ago, um, there was actually a tank company here of Sherman's, which caused me absolute grief. Because obviously we've got there's only infantry, these are all only infantry, we have no anti tank guns or anything in this area. Um, this is all we had was the light gun, and this the light gun actually got hit early on by some infantry units. 
um, was pretty useless. So we had really nothing to actually hit the tanks with and it caused me absolute grief, it did. Um, but I can't see it at the moment, so that's quite good. I'm quite happy about that, but we haven't seen it yet. So hopefully we can actually secure this objective quite quickly. I think it's, it's going pretty well at the moment. We should be able to have seen them if they're going to be there. All right, what we're going to do... We're going to move, I'm just going to move order, I'm just going to move this um, 1st Battalion down here as well and get them in the village. And one other thing I'm going to do, so there's some units there, I'm just going to pause quickly and send some artillery support into this village. I suspect it's going to be an entrenched infantry company and they can be hard to dislodge. So a whole stack of artillery in here. Hopefully we don't get the avoid friendlies in the area message. Keep an eye on that, we have to adjust our orders if we do. I oh, know it's an anti-tank gun com uh, artillery company, All right, so it's not as bad. You see actually how things change? Sort of like the fog of war, you're not quite sure about um, you know, your orders change or that kind of stuff. So we're just going to uh, tick off this, move the lines forward a little bit. Make sure they cover it and put off avoid friendlies. So it may take a couple of hits here and there of friendlies, but I think it's worth it. We probably don't really need all the overkill that we've got. We'll probably take off two missions there to save some ammo. I think three should be enough because it's only an artillery company. We're not that strong. Against, um... There we go. Yes, yeah, they're already retreating, so that's fine. So the artillery did its work, which is awesome. So I suspect see that little yellow dot there. That means receiving fire. I suspect that's probably our own artillery. Not too worried about that because it's stopped now, which is awesome. Cool, right, so that's done. So these guys, these guys are going to move through here. So we have two battalions, in, two infantry battalions sitting here. This one especially is worn out though, so they're going to have to rest for a night, whereas this one is pretty okay. Um, all right, so something I'm actually going to do now, guys, is... Um, a problem that some of you may come up against, like you've seen me put like rest orders onto none. A problem with that though is once a, a, a battalion or a unit reaches the objective, sometimes that none will still apply. So even though they're still sitting here doing nothing, they still won't rest, whereas it's not what you want. So what, what I'm actually going to do now with these guys, I'm pretty sure they're not really going to have any problems here, but I'm actually going to put them onto a defend order. Um, I'm just going to put them on whatever they want to make it. I don't really mind. Defend that one, there we go, they put unspecified. Um, and I'm just going to put them on to normal rest, which means that they should rest through the night. So these rest ones basically just determine how long they rest through through the night. Um, units won't rest during the day unless they're absolutely exhausted. They'll just rest through the night. So maximum means, I think, the whole night. Normal means, like, around the eight hours, I think. Uh, minimum just means, I think, bare minimum, like, maybe, I don't know, four or five hours or something like that. So that's what those two things mean. mean. Here's this armoured platoon, I think, which is probably what we had across here in my last playthrough. They're probably coming here now. Yeah, M4 Shermans, this is it. This is this armor, armor platoon we come up against. So we may, need, it may even need to send a couple of um, tank units down here. We'll see how we go though. Because these guys aren't too far away. We'll see if it keeps moving forward. Because as you would probably think, artillery doesn't really do a whole lot against um, tanks. can be useful sometimes to suppress them. See here, already taking some casualties. Hopefully you can get within range. Um, fire support friendlies in the way. Take that off. Take that off. Uh, there we go. Yeah, taking some hits from the tanks, damn. Um, Alright. So we've got to have a light gun platoon here, which has got a fairly decent anti tank. It's only got like a 7 anti armor rating, but it still is got a far bigger range. It's getting a dark um, towards night time though, so they're probably not going to be able to see much anyway. So what we're going to do is sort of line of sight. So if we can maybe set them up behind here somewhere to see this area. Uh, not really, unfortunately, but if we get too close. Uh, there's a little spot sort of just here somewhere, but it's not great visibility. Damn. No, in the tree line they can't see anything. Um, this is the importance of terrain and the height advantage and all that kind of stuff. Alright, yeah, so that's a pain. We're not really going to be able to get our guns forward anywhere, I don't think. Could potentially get them up here, but they can't really see there because it's behind the tree line. Can't really see a lot. Um, Alright, we're just going to think, we're just going to have to see how we go. Hopefully we can, if we get two battalions coming down here, I think hopefully maybe that'll be enough to maybe deal with some, do some damage. Obviously tanks, um, 
against the infantry can be a pain. We send these guys straight to the village now. Now that we think we've cleared it out, put them onto normal rest. Uh, actually, say uh, yeah, normal rest. Let's see if they can move into the village. I just secure that objective. Because when does that objective runs out? So that objective runs out day two, six p.m. So we're not going to get a whole lot of points completion. Um, occupation points. We should get a fair few completion points. Or we should get the whole lot of completion points. Just move them straight to the village. See how they go. Cool, cool. So these guys are getting set up. Um, we've got the KG Von F, which is fine. Um, we've got the 78th Grenadier Regiment moving up, which is good. Taking the 2nd Battalion there as well with it. So this is the 1st Battalion from that one. We've got some units moving through here. It's actually probably quite good to actually set up a defensive line here. And that we're also bringing in some extra support down here. We'll keep an eye on this one down here, see how that goes. Um, these are all resting, I think. Oh no, they're still moving. Are you moving? Yeah, you're still moving. Alright, that's cool. So, KG Gutman is moving. I think we're going to get a light bridge here from memory. I uh, can't see. Crossing point doesn't say. Alright, that's fine. Doesn't matter. Alrighty, so KG Gutman is moving, which is good. So, they'll get here, they'll set up um, however they want, and they'll attack into here. It's probably going to be a night attack, or maybe it won't be, depending on how much rest. I'm actually going to put them onto minimum rest because they're fairly well rested anyway. I don't want them to waste a whole lot of time. Get the minimum rest and then they may attack um, either late or you know in a couple of hours or maybe they'll rest for a few hours and then attack sort of the early morning. Doesn't really worry me. These guys are moving in, which is awesome. Haven't come up against anything yet that we can send. Keep an eye on this so we can send in artillery support if we need it. Still looks like oh, there's some stump stuff there. It's an anti-tank gun platoon. It's in a bunch of artillery because these guys need a bit of support because they're struggling a little bit, this battalion. So you send a whole stack of um, artillery here. I don't mind using up a bunch of my artillery ammo um, if need be. Because this is a single battalion, to, whereas you know all the other ones have double two battalion support. So I'm not too bothered by that. Oh, there's another one here. It still is there. Damn. M4 Shermans. We're almost in there though, almost within range, so hopefully that's okay. So actually it's moved its two units into here and then these ones have come in here as well. So actually, were, this unit's actually within range of the tanks now, so I hope, yeah, so yeah, it's firing at the tanks now. So it's probably firing its anti-tank weapons, I suspect. Yeah, see the Panzer Trek um, armor piercing rounds are coming down here. See, 26, 23. 25, 23, yeah, so it's firing its anti-tank guns, uh, weapons at it here. So if that's right, they've actually lost two tanks already because that was five, it's down to three, and the reliability is excellent, so it should be right. So it looks like they've lost two tanks already, so I reckon this unit probably won't last a lot longer. It might retreat fairly soon. If I lose anything else, so that white there is retreating. That's a bit of a worry, but they're still firing. Now I've got the objective though, which is awesome. That tank unit's disappeared. It's probably just because we can't see it at the moment. I oh, know it's disappeared. I don't know what's happened there. Interesting. I doubt. I doubt it. Um. I doubt it would have like, been destroyed, but who knows? Anyway, this um, seventh company did really well. Took a bunch of tanks out there, which is really good. How are we going over here? There's an infantry company there, taking some fire here and there. May send in a little bit of artillery support just to give these guys a helping hand. Just a couple of units should be enough. Keep an eye on over here. There's an infantry company there, so we can use some artillery because a couple of our units are retreating. So you can see they're struggling a bit, so we can send that in. Friendly's off, oops, there we go. Uh, that's a fairly big footprint, that one, that's fine. Uh, so you can see some of these have a bigger footprint than others. It just depends on the type of weapon. So generally you want sort of more precision. That's actually a little bit too big, isn't it? Uh, what about this one? It's a bit too big too. I think like the rocket launchers um, have really big footprints. Whereas some of them are a little bit more accurate, the guns there were, yeah, so that's a decent one there. Um, that should be okay. So we're really going to hit this position with a lot of artillery. Just to try and dislodge them, because I suspect they're entrenched. I oh, know it says firing, so we don't know. You can see all three of our combat units, all three of them, have already retreated, taking some hits. So I think the only way this um, battalion is going to be able to take this town, or this objective, is by 
blasting the absolute hell out of the, that unit with artillery. I think that should probably maybe do enough. That was a lot of artillery coming in. Lost sight of it, low lost intelligence. So we'll come back to that in a tick. Just pause again quickly. So many units still retreating here, but they're not really taking a whole lot of casualties, which is fine. So it looks like I'm not sure what happened to that tank platoon. So it's normally you get a you actually get a message if a unit surrenders or something, but it hasn't surrendered and we can't so there's no little cross icon for it's been destroyed. But it's just disappeared. It could have routed like back down this way somewhere. But either way, we've taken the objective, which is brilliant. That is really, really good. Um, so all these units are resting now, I think. Yeah, see the resting set, little rest icon. So that matches up to that one there. Looks like a bounce of it's a bed, isn't it? Actually, I probably never worked that out, but it looks like a bed, isn't it? So it looks like a bed, yeah. All right, so these units are resting. That's fine. They've um, got the objective and they're in good, decent positions. So I don't mind them resting where they are, so that's good. So here we go. Basically, the first day, we've taken all of the objectives. Oh, no, there must be units in here somewhere. So you've lost this objective. It must be because there's units in within this range in this ring somewhere which you can't see them. There it is there, that's the one that we're dealing with. I think that's going to be driven off fairly quickly so this objective should come back. Should be careful this though because we don't want, to, don't want it to be disputed um, at the time it ends which I think when it was at um, day 2 6pm. So we still want to hold that at day 2 at 6pm otherwise we won't get the completion bonus. Um, cool cool. Some tank units come in here, an armoured platoon. I'm not too bothered, there's a whole stack of 1200 men here um, with a bunch of guns and stuff as well, so I'm not too worried about any attacks coming in here. I think we're going to be pretty fine. Um, KG Von F is here, it's ready and yep, he's all good, which is fine. Alright, so we're going to start moving some of our other units in, I think. Um, we'll move in KG Kunkel, we'll move you guys over here to get a little bit more support to the units coming up this way. Uh, we'll just leave it as it is, quickest route, it's fine. We actually move this big regiment, the 902nd regiment, 2,900 men. We're actually going to just move you down to here below the town, which will reduce that footprint, it's too big. We don't want you everywhere. Just going to face you this way. Quickest, just fine. Um, once we clear out a little bit of this area, we'll move the 901st as well, I think. Don't really want to move them yet because there's still some fighting going on here. Um, Goodman's moved up. It looks like they're not resting yet because they're on no rest, I think, weren't they? Yep. So Goodman's actually pretty much ready to go. So here's some support units in behind. And all the combat units are in front, so that's quite cool. So there we go. So it's actually really quite cool. He's actually set up. He's decided to actually put these mechanized units here and actually to attack from this side. And these ones are coming basically straight on, and these ones are actually sort of taking a more sort of side approach um, and actually covering the open ground and tacking from the one space that on the southeast over here which is quite interesting. Um, all our units are still over here. We can't see that infantry unit here. We don't know if it's there yet. We haven't still taken the objective so I'm thinking it probably is. We'll keep an eye on this, see how it goes. So unfortunately the tank is in front though which is a bit disappointing. These ones are getting held up a little bit because they've got to cover some terrain. So hopefully we don't lose too many or any panther tanks. We've got 14 panthers in there, which is quite a lot of tanks. Um, I hate losing tanks. Um, hopefully we don't lose any tanks to any units in here. Just keep an eye on this, make sure nothing untoward happens. So my successive lines didn't, the successive lines formation didn't really work as I wanted. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. I'll have to look in the menu, see how, menu will see how it works. I haven't come across anything here though, so there mustn't be a unit here anymore. Otherwise it would have fired on this unit. Right, this unit, this infantry unit is still here, it's dug in. So we hit it with artillery again. So you may think it's a bit of a pain to set up these artillery missions all the time, um, but it is sort of really worth it to be, to be able to hit like, you know, sort of really focus fire on areas where you need it. Need it the most, like to support this battalion here, so. It is a bit time consuming, but it pays off in absolute spades. Because otherwise, even if we if we left all the units attached, the artillery units attached, this battalion wouldn't be getting anywhere near the amount of fire support that it is at the moment. And it would probably mean that it would really struggle to complete this objective. And I think we should be able to dislodge this unit quite quickly. Let's see how that goes.
So we lost four Panthers already, so that's why you don't want to send in tanks unsupported. Lost four Panthers out of our 14, um, and this unit's going to retreat. So there you go. Prime example of why you don't want tanks coming early into first. I tried to avoid that with the successive lines, and it was why I was reluctant to send in armoured units, like especially some of these tank battalions, to reattach you to your home force to take you off our command limit. Um, yeah, that's that's why. You don't... I hate losing tanks. Um, yeah, so we've lost 10 Panthers, which is uber, uber disappointing, but I think once these units come in, we should secure the objective anyway. Um, it's just disappointing to lose so many tanks like that, four tanks. That's because we got too close and we were just hit by probably, you know, RPGs and stuff. Which is disappointing. Um, still some fighting coming on here, taking some casualties here and there. I think it's probably from this infantry unit up here. I don't know where this tank's coming from. Or this tank unit down here is gone, I can't see it. So it's probably not there anymore. Everything's all good over here, so this area is completely fine, which is really, really good. Some of these units resting, which is good, which means once these guys are rested, I think what we'll do is actually probably start pushing these guys across once this objective ex once this objective um, expires. We'll probably push these guys across because there will be a couple of objectives. If we look here, um, these grayed out objectives, by the way, aren't active yet. So you actually see from this from time or day hasn't actually come into effect yet. So this one, like Bastogne, doesn't actually start until day three at 8, 800, 8 a.m. Um, and like these two, um, Wilts and Wine, Widingen, Widingen, um, actually don't come into effect until day two at 8.30 a.m. So for another, you know, 10 hours or so. Um, yeah, so. So I think what we'll do, we'll probably end up getting both these battalions actually pushed towards these objective. Try and clear um, any area, any units in this area out. Which means we're probably gonna, that'll give us another opportunity to maybe even push some armoured un units down this road. Um, and then across these, this is light bridge here. So we actually cross our armoured units here or medium bridge. We can actually cross, um, use this road, fold these road actually up through the hills. If we secure um, wilts here, actually can actually come up this road. Um, up through here and actually here. This is actually a position I scouted out in my last playthrough. This little ridge line here, actually you see these darker lines here, so this is a 530 meter above sea level ridge. This little ridge over here overlooks, um, oh there we are, down this way, overlooks Bastogne. So this ridge here overlooks Bastogne. You actually get some really good visibility on Bastogne, but also all the way up the highway here. So it really gives us a really good position to be able to see, um, once we push our armoured units through, um, and start coming down the highway and actually see what we're up against before we actually get there. So this is a position I really want to take. So if we can clear up um, all this area and wilts and stuff, that's going to make it a lot easier to get some units through here um, and get some spotting on there. Alrighty, how are we going here? So a few units here and there. Um, we haven't lost any more Panthers, which is awesome. We've got our mechanized infantry in here, which is good. A whole bunch of units here. So stacked up units like this is a perfect opportunity to um, hit with artillery, and this is our big um, big artillery, our big sort of big spread artillery, so I'm going to use these ones. Um, and take off avoid friendlies. So it means they cover as like a, covers a big area. So they're not as accurate, but they do like cover more units as you can see. So I'm just going to hit these with a lot of artillery. Um, so out of ammo, that one. Um, I should mention with like the ammo up here, you can see the artillery ammo, ammo up here. Ammo and supplies and stuff get replenished at least once a day, sometimes multiple times a day. So even though, like example, this one's out, it should get a new supply of ammunition sometime within the next day, so we'll be able to use it. So it's not as if like you've used up all your ammo and you can't use it, you know, if, again, for the rest of the mission, you do get supply missions and stuff coming constantly. But the whole supply model um, is you know, completely modeled. Uh, the whole supply chain is completely modeled. Um, I'll have a quick look at show you guys that in a minute. I'm going to hit these guys with a huge amount of artillery. So I think we should be able to do a lot of damage to these units here. Because um, they're all bunched up. This pesky little infantry unit, infantry company is still here. So anything we're not using in that area, we're going to hit with again in this area. Um, you as well, I think that should be enough. So you see like a, a, a dug in position in good luck because towns are fairly defensible. Um, so you see here, this direct hit and area hit, I'm not sure, hopefully you guys can see this pop up, you should be able to. Um, so I just right clicked on this area, this direct hit. So it shows you that 37%, so basically like an open terrain is 100%, so it means that 100% you get basically no protection. So it's like a direct hit. So direct hit is like gunfire, um, area hit is like artillery fire. 
So if we click on the town though, direct hit is only 37%. So you get a huge reduction in the, like you get basically, it's like basically a protection, um, like defensive um, bonus there for direct hit and a smaller one for area hit here. Um, so for artillery. Really interesting aspect is you actually click on forests, direct hit is reduced, so 16%, so you like gunfire and stuff, but area hit for artillery is actually increased, so 114%. That's to model um, tree burst. So if you look at um, this, the one that actually comes to me is the Band of Brothers episode where they're in. Um, it's the winter. I don't think it's the Bastogne one, but it's one of them when they're in the forest um, in winter, and they get panned with artillery. And you see all the the um, the shrapnel from the trees, like you know, big chunks of trees and stuff flying through the air, and that's what and that caused you know enormous problems for troops. And that's why this area hit is at 140%. You actually take extra artillery damage um, in, in forested areas. So that's the reason that is there. Um, yeah, right, so everything else is going pretty well. Some units down here, I'm fairly happy though. There's two battalions here, that should be more than fine. Got this battalion here, starting to get some of our units, some of our regiments will move across. Might actually even move the second Panzer Lear across. Just sit them right down here at the bottom, just to get them across the river just because obviously crossing a bridge is a little bit slower than moving across normal terrain, so if we just get them across quickly, that should be fine. We'll leave the 901st there until we get some more room that we can actually bring them across. See how we're going here. So we see that all these units retreating because they're taking a fair bit of damage. So these units, a bunch of artillery units, these are probably the artillery units that has been pounding our poor battalion over here. So that's actually quite satisfying to hit all of those. So there's three artillery units there. So they should take a huge amount of damage from this. Which is awesome, so that's good. So um, we didn't lose any more, we lost four Panthers but no more after that, which is fine. Um, these units are all resting, so I'm, I'm okay with that. Fairly happy, we actually have cleared out all pretty much all of this area, which is okay. Um, I think all these units are resting, you know, they're still defending. This unit still hasn't moved. Persistent little thing, isn't it? Keeping it with artillery. It's got to break eventually. It's got to. Just, it, it keeps take, keeps taking um, artillery damage. It's got to. Be, it's got to move eventually and retreat. Still here fighting those. It's probably down here somewhere. Yep. So he's taking some artillery hits here. So this unit's taking a fair bit of damage. It's already lost what. 17% of its personnel, a bunch of its equipment, 20% now. So unfortunately this, this poor little third company um, is taking a lot of hits. So the equipment, the reason the equipment drops down is once you take casualties, I mean, it's, it's modeling the fact that you're going to lose, um, you know, like um, weapons and, and um, ammunition stuff which are on the, you know, the soldiers and stuff that get killed, so that's why equipment drops down. Uh, morale drops temporarily, when, when you take casualties it will build back up again. Uh, but it sort of drops temporarily. So, a bit of a pain there. May even put a few fire support missions, um, some of our bigger guns, into this area. So, sort of an area support, area hits. Just to see if um, we can set some area, some damage in here. So, we're still getting some fire in here. So, maybe put some more, um, some more artillery in there. We'll see how we go. Some some attacks through here. So this is really disjointed at the moment. All right. So this um this unit this infantry unit must have moved because we now have this objective, which is brilliant. So this unit must have retreated, which is awesome. Don't know where it's gone yet though, which is okay. Um, so actually put in some more artillery in this area. So we have big ones. Anytime you can catch clusters of units like this out in the open um, is a prime candidate for artillery. So using up a fair bit of our artillery and ammunition mode, uh, we should get a supply um, mission sometime through the night, I believe. So I'm okay with that. I'm happy with that. So two there, looks like a battalion, so a battalion of some sort. It is mechanized, you can see that little mechanized icon. That may not be 100% correct because the reliability is only good. Um, so it could be different, but this is an infantry company, so it could be an infantry battalion, but we don't really know yet. If they're taking a lot of artillery or fire, they should be getting hit a fair bit. Let's see though. 
So we've got this objective, which is awesome, so that's really good. Cool, cool, cool. Everything else is going quite well. Um, I'm actually going to bump up the speed, guys. Bump up to the faster speed, because night time generally is a, bit, a little bit quieter. It's actually quite a fair bit of action um, currently through this night. You don't usually get this much, because most both sides are generally resting, so you get, still get some units around here. Um, I'm not too worried about a lot of this, though, because come daylight, when our visibility increases, a lot of these units are going to be able to hit um, units they currently can't see, like these units in here. Normally this unit wouldn't have got anywhere near this close because um, like the tanks and stuff wouldn't would have hit them a lot earlier. So once daylight comes um, and vis visibility increases, they're going to take quite a lot of casualties because they're in quite close. I'm actually not really bothered by all of this, although this is a... Um, yes, yeah, so this is a bazooka one, so AT guns. So this is an AT one, so I'm a little bit worried about this because we've got some mechanised forces here, some light tanks and stuff. I don't want them to get slaughtered by the AT guns. I'm just going to start putting some artillery down here to try and hit this AT um, unit here. So there we go. You see this unit here is taking some hits. And that would be from this AT platoon. So I'm going to put a fair bit of artillery down on it. See if we can um, see if we can cause it to retreat. So there we go. So we got a little armoured um, platoon in here, I'm not too bothered, it's only three tanks. A fair bit of um, units in here, like I said, once daylight comes, I'm not too bothered by any of this. Especially as this objective doesn't actually expire until 6pm, so like if it expired early in the morning, like 8.30am, I'd be a little bit more worried because I wouldn't want to lose this objective, lose the completion, um, but for the moment, fairly okay with it, so that's okay. Some mortar, uh, it's mortar platoon in there, I'm not bothered by any of that though. It's taking some artillery fire though. Unfortunately, you are going to take losses though. It's just part of the game. Some of our units taking some hits here. I'm not too bothered. Let's see what happens though. So as all these units rest, their fatigue will come down. Um, it looks like they're actually rested though, because probably because they're probably because they were fairly rested and they're on um, minimum rest. So it looks like they've finished resting. It looks like they're gonna start moving again, which is probably not a bad thing for us. Although at night time, it's not great to put in a a mechanized or armored attack because their visibility is reduced, and so visibility is one of their big strengths to hit you know hit units from a long way away where they can't be hit in return. So it's not ideal, but I think it's okay. I'm just going to say it's okay anyway. Cool, cool, cool. So none of the units have started moving yet because they're all still resting, so that's why, in case you were wondering. Um, might start moving some of these units across, actually. So the biggest formation under... Um, so we've got a regiment here, KG Kushen, Koshenhausen, Koshenhausen um, which is 1,654 men, 60 tanks. Um, that's... Yes, let's do it. So yeah, some tanks and stuff coming here. I'm not too worried about this because actually within our yeah, so actually they they're retreating now because they probably took some hits. Because if they're coming too close, that with they're within range of our anti-tank um, guns like our bazookas and stuff, or our Panzerfaust, I should say. So these units are starting to move. I'm not too bothered by most of these though. I think we should be okay to, to deal with this. Well, we're taking some casualties here, aren't we? Should be concerning. Um, Alright, so 2nd Panzer Division, which will start moving across quite soon. It's got KG Kuschenhausen, which is 1654, it's a regiment. And then you've got a regiment up here, KG Holtmeyer, which is 2508 men and 107 tanks. That's the two big formations of 2nd Panzer. We'll probably individually move both of those across. Um, just, I don't think our command load should be fine. Yeah, 23, so we've still got another 13. These units are taking a fair bit of hits, which is not good. So, we're going to put down some more artillery. Let's 
uh, this unit, which I think was out of ammo, um, has got a new supply of ammo, so that was what I was talking about with getting supplies of ammo through the night and stuff. So this one as well, uh, cool. Alright, whole stack of artillery. And support. It probably wasn't a good idea of mine to send in this attack um, at night time. Well, when I knew it would be night time, I probably should have waited until daylight. Because obviously, like I mentioned, visibility is reduced and that. It's sort of their, one of their big strengths removed. It allows infantry companies and stuff to get in close and use their, um, their anti-armor weapons. Ah, oh, cool. I think this, this little cross here, this is... I can't click on it. Why can't I click on that? Normally you can click on it and see what unit it was. I, I'm highly suspect it's probably this infantry um, company that was in here. It's probably retreated and then for whatever reason it's been destroyed or been disbanded. So that's why we've taken this objective here, which is good. So that's good. Cool, cool, cool. Got some units here and there. I'm not too bothered right about any of these though. They're all quite small attacks. Oh, quite small. So it's 3.20 a.m. I think it's a little bit slow. So we're running at the hour mark for the episode. What I might do is keep the episode running until sort of early morning once we sort of beat back some of these units. Um, and then we'll pause the... Uh, or end the episode there. And um, we'll pick things up again next time. So you can see that game is quite involved. It's got quite a bit of time. Um, I guess I, I do probably play it fairly involved. I do sort of you know, take my time with stuff, so... Maybe I'm a bit slower than others, but it is, like, it is quite a time-consuming game. It's a quick game, but hopefully you guys can see how sort of involved it is. And I just think it's... I don't know. I, I'm not sure. Well, I think it's the um, the way that the command structure works and the way that you like you have subordinates and stuff. I think it's just so unique that it really accurately models the whole command chain and the whole you know subordinates and you know, people carrying out your orders, and sometimes they just don't do it right, sometimes, they, you know, like I said, sometimes they just make mistakes, and, um, you know, sometimes they just, you know, if you get really bad commands, like, you look in command structures here, every um, HQ unit has different stats here, so if you click on a few HQ units here, they all have different ratings, and they all have different, obviously, ranks, um, and, you know, based on these ratings is based on how they actually perform, and, you know, actually carry out your orders and do different things, like, you get really aggressive leaders, which are really good in um, initiative and things like that. And like, if you have really low determination, like they won't, if they're taking some casualties, they may just stop. Um, whereas you like a high determination leader will probably keep pushing on. Efficiency and judgment and staff quality, all that kind of stuff is all modeled. So sometimes like this, the actual, the forces we're dealing with here are fairly good. They're not amazing. Uh, you think this is 1944 for Germany. So they're sort of scraping at the bottom of the barrel in terms of manpower and stuff. They've lost a lot of their good. Um, their men, a lot of their good manpower and a lot of their good officers and stuff. Um, so this, I mean, this is probably a, a, a middle of the line formation um, in terms of quality and stuff. It's decently trained, decent experience, sort of like middle of the run. Um, but I know from some experience, um, you, you can get some really rubbish units. So for example, here, like the, the Volksgrenadier Division. So Volksgrenadier Divisions were sort of um, like civilian formations, which were then later in the war converted to sort of full proper formations once Germany started running out of sort of men. Um, so you actually see here experience and training is quite a lot less than if you look at, for example, the 2nd Panzer Division has like a bit more training and stuff there, especially some of these regiments up here have a fair bit more training and experience um, than what the the, um, the Volksgrenadier Division does because you know, they, they, weren't, they didn't see a lot of combat before the, the Battle of the Bulge down here. So, so a couple of armoured units here taking some hits on our men. I'm not too bothered by this, although they are pushing some of our guys back. Feasibility is going to jump up soon though, and I think they're going to be in trouble once that happens. But anyway, actually, they're, they're too close to our units to actually hit. But see, they're coming too close, and they get within range of all our, our armoured, anti-armour units. So what we're going to do, we're going to wait until daylight hits, uh, until the visibility increases, and see if we can beat back these units, I think we will be able to. But we'll play it by year, see what happens. So keep an eye down here. So I think six o'clock is the time. I think six o'clock is the time that it changed. Yeah, so I see they're retreating there, so they're taking some hits on their um on their armored units because they got too close. Same luck with all their units and stuff, getting quite close. Once daylight hits visibility increases, they'll get it they'll get hit fairly hard. Units still in here. So I'm actually hit this unit with some artillery given they're in the forest. So as we mentioned, they're going to take extra artillery damage. So 
Probably a decent opportunity to do some um, some extra damage to them. I'm gonna drop the speed back to the normal one. Actually, there's two companies there, which is awesome. So I think two for the price of one. So they should take a fair bit of damage from that. So almost six. Let's see how the visibility increases. Oh, no, it hasn't. I was wrong. It must be a later time. So when sunrise is 8 a.m., so maybe it's 7. Anyway. We'll keep playing through. 65 minutes, or an hour and five minutes. We should keep playing through until dawn, I think. So we've reclaimed this objective, which is good. So it means we've beaten off whatever units are in this area. Um, so we've contested objectives like this. So I actually lost it again. Um, contested objectives, you need a 10 to 1 combat power, combat power superiority, so 10 to 1 advantage um, to actually hold an objective when there's enemy units in there. I think that's right, don't quote me 100%. I know the 10 to 1's right, I'm not quite sure if it's any enemy units or anyway. Um, yeah, so obviously if there's no unit, enemy units in there, well you just hold it. Um, but if they are, I think it's a 10 to 1 combat power ratio. or well, combat power advantage you need, which obviously is quite a bit, so. So you're yeah, still taking hits. And artillery shots now, damn. Alrighty, I'm gonna put some more artillery in. Uh, actually, use some of our big guns to cover some bigger area. Okay, everywhere else. Everywhere else is all good, which is awesome. Artillery is just absolute. God, it is. I just, yeah. You can see why. Well, I mean, obviously, like, it's, I mean, it's, it's not unrealistic. Like artillery in, in World War Two was, in World War One as well, was just um, devastating a lot of the time. Especially if you get caught in the open and all that kind of stuff. Like I mentioned with the tree bursts and things like that, artillery was could be really devastating. So I think it is really well modelled. Um, like I mentioned, having artillery superiority at the moment. I'm not sure if it lasts, but at the moment it is very advanta advantageous. It means we can do a lot of damage. Anti-dance, so that anti-tank gun platoon has come in quite close. So we can put down some artillery on them, try and drive them back. Because we don't want them hitting our poor little um, light tanks and things like that. So these are little pumas, so the little puma sort of armor. Well they're armored cars, aren't they? Not even, not even light tanks. So they are quite vulnerable to anti-tank um, fire because they don't have a whole lot of um, armor protection. 7 a.m., there we go. So visibility has, the, the, the map has changed and visibility has increased. So a lot of these units, like over here and stuff, um, are gonna get driven back. And they're gonna be in range of fire that they previously weren't. So I'm actually gonna hit these guys again with some artillery. Just a few shots there. I have used up a fair bit of artillery at the moment. I'm not too bothered. This is okay, I think we should be fine here. I haven't lost any more Panthers, which is awesome, after losing four, which I'm still annoyed about. Um, but that's all okay. You've actually stopped your mission, haven't you? All right, so why is that? What we're gonna do, we're gonna put a defend mission here. I think we're gonna do all-round defense in this area. We're gonna reduce the frontage or the footprint. I'm gonna say defend this area. Um, I don't think it's worth doing an attack mission because most of the units are already there. I think we're going to do a defend mission and go max aggressiveness. So we want to basically attack these units. I'm actually going to put them onto attacks, yes, as well. Which means that if he, if the, the force commander deems it necessary, he can actually launch his own attacks to drive units out of this area. So we'll see how that goes. There's a whole bunch of units here, which is quite surprising. I thought they would have left by now. So if you want to stay there, that's fine, but we're going to hit you with artillery. Cool, cool. No, no, second, I swear we told you to move. Just definitely told the Panzer Leader Division to move. I'm not quite sure why that's changed. Uh, it's probably in here somewhere. Could have ran out of time or something. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. Alrighty, that's annoying. Alright, so we're going to do this again. Um, sometimes these end times seem a little bit too close to me. Like that one was set at day 2 at 10.53, which is only a couple of hours away. I'm actually going to switch it out to day 3 to make sure they don't run out of time. Because if they, if they sort of get too close to it, they actually cancel the thing and say they can't do it in time. So let's just say quickest um, and reduce the footprint. There we go. And then move the Panzer Lear division across. Do the same thing. Quickest. And then I'm actually going to move the 901st down here. Yeah, there we go. Just do quickest and reduce your footprint as well. There we go, that's fine. Cool, cool. Um, KG Kunkel. Yeah, I should move you up here. I'm not sure why you didn't move in the first place. Quickest and increase the time. There we go. Um, cool. I'm going to move. That's you're there anyway. Right. We're going to move this force across. So KG Koshinhausen, and move you across to the bottom of the ridge or the bottom of the valley, whatever you want to call it. Here, and we'll do this. And there we go. And move Holtmeyer just down a little bit quicker, down a little bit closer to the bridge. Just so we don't have to um, don't have to move you later. A little bit less work we have to do later on. Alright, so a bunch of these units should start moving across, which should be good. Taking a bunch of artillery fire here, which is frustrating. Alrighty. They're playing, um, they're being a lot more aggressive here with this town than what they were in my last playthrough, which is fine. We're still going to be fine, like, we're not going to lose it, it's just a bit of a pain sort of holding some stuff up, because we can't get our, our panzer units or our armoured units through. Um, and I really want to, on day two, I really, by end of day two, I actually want to be over the other side of the, over the bridge, because that gives me another three and a half days um, to actually get across to Bastogne, which I think is probably what we're going to need. So by the end of the day too, I want to be across. I want to be able to capture these bridges and I want to be across the other side of the river. So we've only got, got a whole lot of time to do that. Alright, so there we go. So we're at full visibility now, it's daylight. Um, so you can actually see a bunch of these units are now engaging these units, which they weren't be able to, weren't able to see before. Um, you can see like for example here. Over here, this unit is engaging this one over here. Um, I suspect if we jump on the tools. So this is threats, it shows threats, there we go, so yes, you actually see threats, it's not, threats doesn't show who they're engaging threat necessarily, um, threats show their, their sort of their, their biggest threat, um, which is, a lot of the time is who they're engaging, but not always. Um, yes, yeah, so this unit is now engaging this one, this anti-tank um, platoon over here, you can see, actually see their ranges, they've got a really big range on their units, um, whereas in, you know, night time they couldn't see them, so they couldn't get, you couldn't engage them, so they're now firing on them, so... That's the difference that um, the daylight makes, and generally why you don't want to um, conduct armoured attacks at night time. Because they lose their visibility advantage. So I think these units are going to be driven back fairly quickly, because um, a lot of these units are now firing on them. They have the opportunity to fire on them where they didn't before, so I think that's okay. If not, we could even push a, a battalion across here, maybe trap them in this area. We could even destroy a bunch of units there. We'll see how we go. Alrighty, how are these units going? So they're actually pretty good on fatigue. So I think we're going to end the episode here, guys. I think what we'll do um, next time around, just as a bit of a, a primer, we're going to push these two battalions, or this one and this one, which this one's still a little bit fatigued. Uh, that's right. But we're going to push these two battalions and probably this force as well, KG von F. Um, we're going to push those three to take this objective. That's going to be our objective for the second day. I think we're going to be fairly okay to capture that fairly easily. I want to get across here. Actually, I'd, ideally, I'd like to get up on this ridge here. You can see this ridge across here. Uh, that would be a perfect spot for us to get because that gives us a good sort of sight lines all around here. Keeps the units here to cover this bridge, which would be fine. So we're going to do that. Um, we're going to push these two, leave it sort of a token force guarding this area. I'm going to push the bulk of these two battalions, get them marching across here, and we'll get start trying to take over Wilts um, and clear out any units here. Um, we'll get the oh, the entirety of the Panzer Lear divisions, so the 901st Regiment, 902nd Regiment, and the actual division across. Um, we'll probably set them up here somewhere once we clear out this area. Um, and then once we've... And then we'll do the same with the 2nd Panzer. We'll set them up in this area once we've cleared it out. 
Um, we'll probably use the KG Gutman force and probably even the KG Koshenhausen force to actually capture this bridge down here at Clovo. Clovo. Um, and once that's done, so what the plan is, once we've actually captured those bridges, we're going to use basically the bulk of those two divisions, the Panzer Lee and the 2nd Panzer Division. Um, we're actually going to push them across in force um, and actually really start pushing them towards the highway. Um, the Pan 2nd Panzer is going to push probably ba basically straight for the highway here. Panzer Lee is probably going to come up from the south, probably link up here. Once we're up here, up here with our two Panzer Divisions, um, we'll probably push our infantry sort of down south through these forested areas because that's probably um, obviously motorized units struggle a little bit in the forested areas. So I'll probably use our infantry and push through these areas, clear out these areas. Set up a, a base of fire here or position here to actually see what's happening. Maybe set up another one here because there's a bit of a ridge here. Once we can see the entirety of the highway, we can actually push our two panzer divisions right down the highway into Bastogne really quickly, as quickly as possible. Because I suspect by then we're going to start having some reinforcements. We want to get into Bastogne as quickly as possible. I'd like to get actually past Bastogne if I really can, and um, it would be perfect. And then once we've got Bastogne, that's pretty much game, that's pretty much scenario, because there is a, a um, objective up here of Noville, I'm not too worried about that. Because once we can get access to the exit objectives here on the side of the map, um, that's pretty much game. And once we've got, so we get Bastogne and we get the exit objectives, that's going to be a win for us, so that should be good. But um, yeah, it depends how quickly we can do it, and it depends how quickly the um, the reinforcements arrive, we'll just you know, play it by year. Alrighty guys! Uh, 16 minutes in the episode. It's quite a long one. Hope you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of the game. Hope you stick around for this series. Hope you enjoy it. Let, let me know any feedback, all that kind of stuff. Always here to, keen to hear your comments. And yeah, hope you've all had a wonderful day and I'll see you all for the next episode.